Well, hello there, you remarkable lot. I feel like I'm getting to know some of you from lots of the questions and comments and remarks that you've been making uh, from our previous episodes of the show. Thanks so much for the feedback that you've uh, you've been giving us. This week represents the first in a short series of episodes that we're going to be putting together. Uh, they're going to be conversations between myself and David where we look to answer some very specific questions that, uh, that you've been posing in some of our conversations. This week, we are looking at answering a question that was posed by the head teacher of a primary school in Oxfordshire. And she poses the question, how do you go about developing a school brand that represents more than just the obvious unique selling points of your school? A really interesting question. I hope you find the conversation where we try and answer that really interesting as well. So sit back, grab a cup of coffee, cup of tea, and uh, I'll see you at the end of the conversation with some further details, more information, and some information about uh, what to expect in the, the next episode of the show. I'll see you soon. Good afternoon, everybody, and hello, David. How are you, sir? Hi, Mark. Yeah, I'm very good, thank you. Very good. Glad to be back with just you and me. It is it, nice. It feels warm and warm and cosy again. That, that makes it sound like we don't like having guests, David. We need to. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Um, no, they've been fantastic, the guests. But there's there's a little. Um, it, it's just it's just different when it's just you and me, and we're we're chewing the fat, as it were. It, it, it's nice. It feels good. Well, on that note, I've got a cracker for you today. Okay. Um, and I'm sorry to spring this question on you, but it was something that, uh, again, it was raised on one of our masterclasses. Um, but it's a brilliant question, actually. Um, to give you an idea of how the question came about, on the masterclass, as you know, we are encouraging schools and, and giving them the tools they need to develop their brand identity. That's effectively what we're, what we're looking to do. And one of the first things that we do with the schools is we ask them a very simple question and we ask them to provide a very simple answer to it. And the question is, what is remarkable about your school? And that's the question we ask every school that we ever talk about, uh, we ever talk to. But quite on the master... Well. It, sorry? It's quite hard for them to answer as well, isn't it? It, it, it can be. Yeah, yeah. And we get... we. We get lots of similar answers, and then sometimes we get some very, very different answers, depending on 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 yeah. who we're talking to, and I think depending on um, depending on the knowledge that the person's got of of the school and the offering, etc. Yeah. I, I remember the the one head teacher. Sorry, I, I know you're going to ask the question, but I remember the one head teacher who'd written a single answer down on his on his um, sheet. And when you were when you were going around asking each of them what is their remarkable, he just said me. He did. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was fantastic. It is brilliant. And um, having spoken to him since, it, it, it was pretty much true as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, and I think I think a head teacher can be can't a head teacher can be you know the driving force behind the character of a school and probably probably should be as well, but. Uh, that lends itself to this sort of question, really, which is how you how you get all of those different elements of a school. This was um, so. This was a business manager who was on the course. I've asked the question, "What is remarkable about your school?" I've asked them to give us a, a single word, a short phrase, a, a couple of points, something really, really simple. Not spend a huge amount of time doing that. I'm going to read her question to you. She said, um, and this this came at the end of the course really. We're developing a forest school and we have masses of great outdoor space. This is probably a USP and it will be attractive to lots of parents, but it's not the be all and end all of what they want in a school. It's more like the icing on the cake and it doesn't feel right to form our brand focused solely or primarily on this. How would you handle it? And it's a great question because I think it's actually a uh, a mistake that you can fall into when you start talking about those things that a, a school message and a school brand can over focus on one element and doesn't isn't paying attention to i suppose the things that everybody values in a school and everybody and, and yeah. different people value in the school um so we started uh, you know obviously i i provided a response to that and and it, 
essentially what we were talking about was developing that brand messaging around its character and its ethos and what's important to it. And and she almost answered the question herself because she said it's the icing on the cake. Mm-hmm. It yeah. kind of is. It's the the forest school is the it's the vehicle that you use to express the the character and the and the nature. Yes, exactly, exactly. Um, and it, it's a feature of the school, isn't it? It's um, it, it's something that they offer, um, and it might be unique to them in the area, um, but it wouldn't it wouldn't necessarily make you choose that school um, or see that school in a particular way because it is a forest school or it's got nice outdoor space. Um, and I think, the, the, yeah, you're right. It, it's, the, it's the messaging around that. How do we deliver the characteristics of, of our school or the personality of our school? And one way of doing that is, is by... Um, using specific messaging using this the fact that they've got a forest school um to um you know it, it, so i'm trying to i'm trying to put it into into a context into a real life example and if um the school's usp was to encourage children to explore um to um you know understand the world around them the the envir- their environment um, how things um, grow and develop um, how we build things and why it's important to look after the environment you can do that I think that's quite a, a you know a, a unique way of um, operating a school you know it, by by doing it that way and the advantage uh, that this school has is this lovely feature of a of a you know, forest setting, forest school setting. They got great outdoor space. And the messaging would be that to deliver our characteristic, our personality, this is the this is the way that we do it. We use this um, forest school facility that we have um, to deliver that. Do you remember when we were talking about how we help schools with their admissions process? And I, I discussed something that, that was instilled in me many years ago when I started out as a salesperson. And that was a recognition of the difference between a feature and a, and a benefit. So the feature of a product mm-hmm. and the benefit of that feature to the, to the potential buyer. And it's, it's the same with this really, in that you, you said the, the forest school is a feature of the school, which is true. What's important is that the benefit to the parent is represented in the way that the school mm-hmm. talks about that. Yeah. So what you're talking about there is exactly that. It's not that it, it, it's like the school doesn't say, Hey, we're a school over here, please come and visit and never providing a reason for it. Simply saying, we've got a forest school. You're assuming parents are going to make all sorts of um, associations with that and realize why that's important. Realize how that, um, expands the the uh, experience of children and how it runs into the curriculum and, and they, they probably won't they might not even know what you mean by a <laughs> mean by a forest school really so you've got to find those why why have you got a forest school why is the school does, there must be a reason why you decided to go with that so what are those benefits to the children what does that what does that provide to children and that's what you're talking about Yes. When you talk about that one feature. However, we're still only talking about that one thing. She's afraid of just talking about forest, you know, the forest schools. So again, we, we've chatted about this on the on the show before, but you've got to get other people involved. You 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 know, ask the staff, ask pupils, ask parents, what do they value in the school? What do they think is remarkable about the school? And you'll get the forest school, but you'll get lots and lots of other answers as well. And you start yeah. to form a whole holistic picture of why people think your school is fantastic. And that's probably your, your starting point. It's not that one person's quick answer to, to my question, really. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. We, we had uh, another project, another branding project uh, very recently. And um, we, we developed the, the a new logo for them, long established school uh, in London and um, 
we developed their new logo for them. It was really vibrant. There was a lot of rationale behind the individual elements in this logo and, and it, it looked fantastic. And when it was applied to all the, the, the marketing assets that the school need, like in, interior um, graphics and um, the brochure and the website, it, it, it did look really good. And, and I know we created it, but it, it did look really good. And one of the questions that came back from, um, it was the head teacher actually, was that they wanted to um, include, looking at the, the, the logo and the branding elements that had been created, they wanted to try and include an element of school readiness. And kind of what I think what they were trying to do was, was to include too many things into the visual element of the branding um, which then kind of uh, dilutes that that message that that impact that it has yeah. and so um, I responded to say that I, you know I, I think that the brand that's been developed answered the brief you know very well um, there was there was lots of exciting elements to it. There was, um, you know, it was vibrant. And I think people would understand what was going on within the logo design and the brand visual elements. And actually what she, what she was wanting to do was bring in um, another factor like school readiness um, that should be done and could be done through their messaging and the wording that they're using to support their brand. Yeah. So it, yes, there's a visual identity, um, but then the brand in itself, as we we often talk about, uh, is so many other touch points that um, have to happen with with the customer or with the parents, and um, you know, so that that the messaging that's going out, the the posts that are being sent out um, on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, that they can include elements of that school readiness and what it means to the school and tie it back into that visual identity and support it with that visual identity that's been created. So, yeah, you can't really focus on one, one element. I think there should be, you, you should focus on what your value proposition is and, and um, your unique selling point. Um, but I think um, there comes a point when that other elements, the other activity that you're doing in your marketing have to support um, that main brand identity that, that's being created. In, in this case, that's what we're talking about, the brand identity. So, Yeah, absolutely. And, and coming back to, to what our business manager asked on, on the course, the, she was thinking very much from a, from a facilities point of view, I think. And, and even on that level, um, you're rarely looking for that one knockout facility that's going to wow every parent that look i mean some schools you know the brand new builds maybe that's kind of useful marketing for the first launch of the school because people will be quite wowed by the the beautiful building but it, it's got to be a combination of of everything that you have there and the whole all of the facilities but then it's the it, it it's, it's the value offering it's the character and and how that so those facilities become a backdrop to the stories that you tell about the, the yes. things that happen in your school and what yes. goes on there. So it's working through the forest school and, and the forest school provides children with, you know, exposure to so much more than, than learning in a, in a classroom. And, the, you know, we could list out, out what, why so many schools have gone for a forest school. It, there's yes. so many benefits to it. But then sort of telling stories as to what that's done for those children or you know what it what it's designed to do for those children because that's what parents buy into and all of a sudden the fact that you've got a forest school starts to make sense to them yes yeah um, and it, and if you've got a strap line um or, or three key messages you know or, or uh, uh, values then then those messages can you know it, the, the information will should link back to one of those messages each time so that you're always you're consistently sending out that same message so that it that it relates to the, the strap line or you know the, the values of the school okay Good question that i like that yeah. 
I mean, a final point of the question was, how would you handle it? And, uh, and essentially what we're saying is that is to step, step back from that initial answer that you've given, involve as many people as you can and get their answers to the same thing. And then form your brand character and your value offering and any of those facilities that have been brought up that, that are very relevant. If, that, if, if you ask someone what's remarkable about the school and they say the forest school, that's a very relevant answer. But it's, it's, it's using those facilities as the backdrop to the stories that you tell and the way that you win the hearts and minds and wow parents about, about your school. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm. An interesting question, I like that. Yeah, yeah and, and not not an easy question to answer quickly because it's there's so much involved with it that you kind of got to backpedal quite a bit to get there, haven't you? Yeah, and I think I think you do need to understand a little bit more about the school to answer that um, probably more succinctly than than I ha- than I have managed to um, today. Um, you know, I'd, I'd like to understand more about the brand of that school and what they're you know. What, what, what they're doing currently, what it looks like, and what they stand for. But um, yeah, I think I think we've done done a, a, a reasonable job there of answering um, what was quite a, a complex question. Brilliant! Thanks for your time. And, Great to see you uh, again. Yeah, see you soon. Take care. Bye bye now. Welcome back. Uh, I hope you found that useful and I hope there were things in there that you're going to be able to take away and make some use of in your own school. Uh, Just to note, at the top of the show, I mentioned that the question had been posed by a teacher at primary school in Oxfordshire and actually it was posed uh, by a school business manager. So apologies for that. As I say, I hope you found it useful. Um, We mentioned and talked quite a lot about my School Branding Identity Masterclass, uh, an open event. It's conducted online that lasts about an hour and a half and is a brilliant place for anybody that is within the school and wants to get a handle on their marketing and communications. A brilliant starting point and some great information for those of you that have already started on that journey. Um, If you'd like to attend, Uh, please contact us. My details will be at the end of the show. Uh, Get in touch and I'll tell you when the next event is and I'm sure lots of you will get a great deal from that. Um, If you like what you've seen today and on previous episodes, please do remember to like and subscribe to our channel. And if you know of anybody else that you think might be able to make some use of our chat, then again, please do let them know where we are. Next week, uh, in the uh, the second of this series of David and I having conversations to answer your questions, we're going to be answering a question about um, how you can manage a limited budget within a school or within a trust to prioritise your marketing activity. Um, so where should you invest that money for the greatest return? That's going to be our conversation next week. Please do tune in because I'm sure you'll get something from that as well. Thanks so much for your time. Do appreciate it. We'll see you again. Goodbye. Thank you for watching Out of the Blue and I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe and leave a comment below on Please ring the bell for notifications. I hope I all see you again soon. Bye.